our first program will print the classic hello world of course let's see full source code here to run the program put the code in the hello world.go and use the okay so that seems pretty straightforward let's do function main fmt print ln hello world run cool that was pretty straightforward nothing too crazy with that one okay sorry this isn't anything like super formal or like, hey guys, Tech Rally here. I'm just gonna be learning Go by example. And if you guys came in a little late, um, yeah, Go is a open source programming language. Um, and it was created by Google, I believe. And it's supposed to be super fast and really performant. And one of my coworkers recommended me to learn Go through Go by example. So I'm just kind of going down the line here. And since it is a Saturday, I have some time to spend. So it's gonna take a gander at this. If you're with me on the first lesson, we went through Hello World. So the second one we're gonna be going through is the values. Go has various types, including string, integers, floats, booleans, etc. Strings, which can be added together with pluses, integers and floats. Booleans with Boolean operators as you expect. Okay, so let's remove this one. So we can do fmt print ln go plus lane. So it looks like you can combine strings together with the plus and let's see what else we can do here. Print ln one plus one equals one plus one. Okay, cool. It looks like it takes the string and I do this. Ah, I see. So adding a comma after each one will generate more console logs here. That's cool. Um, one second. Uh, the next thing we want to do is see if division works. Let's see. FMT print ln 7.0 divided by 3.0 equals 7.0 Alright, gives it into the decimal places. Looks like that works pretty straightforward. Alright, let's see how booleans work here. So print ln true and false. I mean, this is kind of similar to JavaScript. I assume that it's going to be false, but let's see. False, cool. Let's see, fmt, print ln, true or false. True, that makes sense. And then fmt dot print ln of not true would probably be false. Easy. All right, it's pretty straightforward. I think that works pretty well. All right, let's move on to the third one, variables. In Go, variables are explicitly declared using the compiler, check type correctness of function calls. Sorry guys, one second. Sweet. All right, let's see the next one. Either I have one viewer, or I'm just talking to myself. Either way, this is pretty cool. Let's work on the next one. In Go, variables are explicitly declared and used by the compiler to check type correctness of function calls. Bar declares one or more variables. You could declare multiple variables at once. Go will infer the type of initialized variables, okay? Variables declared without 
corresponding our zero value. For example, the zero value for an int zero. Okay. The colon equals syntax is shorthand for declaring and initializing a variable for var f string equals apple in this case. Ah, okay. Let's do var a equal initial, which is one or more variables. And then we fmt print ln of a, then we run. That makes sense. Let's do var b e, comma c int equals one two. So it looks like we need to. Yeah, that's right, because it is. With Go, it's statically typed, so you have to define what kind of variables they're going to be. So if I do fmt dot print ln e comma c, that should run, and it gives one two. That makes sense. And then var d equals true. I mean, what is that going to print? Just true. <laughs> All right, true. Sweet. Last but not least, I guess we could use a shorthand to define something. And then I guess we'll FMT print that line. F. I'm gonna run that. Apple. All right, pretty straightforward. Uh, initializations work with R0 valued. So what does that mean? So. Now I just declare a variable like this for p. Unexpected new line. Cool. It looks like var is pretty flexible in that you don't have to actually define the type. So far, so good. Nothing too crazy. Pretty similar, like all pro programming languages. Let's move on to constants. So Go supports constants of characters, string, boolean, and numeric value. Cost declares a constant value. Const statement can appear anywhere var statement can. Const expressions perform arithmetic with arbitrary precision. A numeric constant has no type until it's given one, such as by an explicit converse, conversion conversation. A number can be given a type by using it in a context that requires one, such as variable assignment or function call. For example, here's math.sign expects a float 64. A number can be given a type by using it in a context that requires one, such as variable assignment function calls. Interesting. Let's see how that works. So it looks like we have to import another one. Our importing syntax is a little different, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna wing it and see what happens. I wonder if I just do this. Let's run it. All right, so that doesn't work. Maybe no comma. Math. Hmm. Package main. Do I need to follow this syntax here. Interesting. Why doesn't this work? Run this out. Hmm. All right, let's open up the Go Play playing here. I don't think I did anything different here. Let's see. Getting an error. Import and not use math. Okay, I think that makes sense because I haven't actually used it in my code base here. So let's see. Let's follow it. So you could define a const and that declares a constant value. 
constant value. So that makes sense. Const s string equal constant. And then we can fmt print ln of s, which will probably come off as the word constant. And then we can do const n equals however big that number is. And then we can do const d equals 3 e to the 20 divided by n. Going back to some old school math days, let's see what that does. Print ln of d. And then we can also print out ln of n64 of d. And we'll print out math dot sign Oops, sign of n. Let's see what happens. Undefined print dot ah, misspelling here. All right, that kind of makes sense. It's a weird way to show an example of using a const, but maybe it's trying to show precision with using the constant with using the const um, example here. So you can do a string. I wonder what happens if I don't give it a... Okay, so that still works. Interesting. Always thought Go was supposed to, has to be statically typed, but I guess there are some exceptions to the rule. So far, so good. It looks like you have some variations between using const and var. And maybe it's because you probably can't redefine it again after you define it once. Let's move on to the for example. All right, for is a go is goes only looping construct. Oh, interesting. Here's three basic types for go, or here's three basic types of for loops. Oh, here's three. Here are three basic types of for loops. Oh, my. Super. Just can't read right now. The most basic type is with a single condition. All right, let's try that one first. Get rid of math. We could get rid of this, rid of this here. Get rid of here. All right, so you define a variable called i to one. That makes sense. And then single conditional. So for i less than or equal to three, going to fmt the print ln of i which makes sense and then we're going to i equals i plus one we run that code fmt the print ln uh, capital p of course yeah that makes sense so you set a variable of i equals to one and then you add i equals i plus one, so it's like one, two, three. All right, that was relatively straightforward. A classic initial condition after for loop. Ah, okay, so this is kind of similar to how JavaScript has it. So for j, and you define it within the for loop itself, and then j less than or equal to nine, j plus plus, Cool, and then we'll say fmt.print ln of j. So that should be seven, eight, nine, I think. Yeah, seven, eight, nine, that makes sense. And then a four without condition will loop repeatedly until you break out of the loop or return from the enclosing function. So, I guess you can add the keyword of break to manually break out of the loop. So that makes sense. So if you had to do loop, break. So I should go loop and then break. Yeah, that makes sense. And then you can also continue to the next iteration of the loop. Ah, so this is kind of maybe when you want to skip something while you're looping. So 
maybe there's like some kind of conditional that you, you only want only odd numbers to display, I guess in this example. So say four um, n equals zero n less than or equal to five n plus plus. It's kind of weird. There's like no uh, parentheses around these. So I'm just kind of used to having that kind of syntax, but this is not bad. And then if n is equal to zero, we'll continue. Otherwise, we're going to print out the n value. Unexpected equal uh, two equal signs. Of course, JavaScript will get me the best of me. Run. 135. All right. So we, what have we done so far? We've done some loops using the for loop. We've defined some variables. We've printed out some console logs. Yeah, everything looks pretty straightforward right now. Um, yeah, I mean, so far it has, it, it's okay, but knowing what I've know about any programming languages, it just starts going from super easy to like blowing up. So I think we could just keep moving on and we'll see how this goes. I'm going to try to keep this maybe like 25 minutes, 20, 30 minutes. And if people like it, I will keep streaming and I'll upload this video. Like there's not going to be any like editing of, of some sort and if i make mistakes that's what live coding is like so yeah let's move on to the next one if else branching with an branching with if else in go is straightforward okay <laughs> here's a basic example you can have an if statement without an else probably this one a statement can precede conditionals. Any variable declared in the statement are available in all branches. Note that you don't need parentheses around conditions in Go, but that braces are required. I guess it's pretty interesting. Oh, that doesn't work. There's no ternary if in Go, so you'll need to use the full statements. Okay, that seems fair. Let's see. So we practice some for loops. If seven parentheses over two equals zero, fmt print ln seven is even, which is not true. But for the sake of the example, it will be fmt print ln seven is odd. Seven is odd. Perfect. Now we'll do one without the else statement. FMT print ln eight is divisible by four. I guess that works. All right. Let's do some if else if else statement. So if num equals nine, oh wow, okay, cool. So if num and num is less than zero, interesting. FMT print ln num is negative else if num is less than or equal 10 fmt print ln num has one digit because it's less than 10 else as you say it has multiple digits or something so fmt print ln num has multiple digits. I see that you can define your variable here inside of your conditional. 
I wonder if it's scoped. So, gnome has one digit. Can I do this? fmt.println of num does this work? Or is it scoped inside of the if conditional? I see. So it's, this looks like it's scoped inside of the conditional itself. So this cannot be exposed to the outside world here. That's pretty cool. That way you don't have to... Let's just change this to 10 to make sure it works. Oh well, this this fails, so we gotta remove this bad boy. This is pretty cool, because uh, during the build time, so we don't have to worry about that. So go like that. 10 has multiple digits, and then maybe we'll like negative 1. 1 is negative. Alright, cool. So it looks like you could do some like if-else conditional statements here as well, so... Not bad. Not bad at all. How many have we gone over? Let's see. We've done one, two, three, three, five, six. All right, we could do one more and then I'm thinking I'm gonna call it quits. But like I said, if you guys like this live streaming, I'm gonna to try to do it on a more consistent basis. Um, let me know like where you would like me to advertise this, whether it's my Instagram channel, um, my YouTube channel or my um, what else do I what kind of other channels my Twitter yeah so let me know where you would like for me to announce it and then I could uh, start doing that as well uh, let's do the last one switch oh this is a long one should be fun switch statements um, express conditionals across many branches that makes sense sorry guys I'm kind of a little distracted here for one second all right, cool. Let's do another thing for me. Awesome. Leos. All right, so switch statements, express conditionals across many branches. Here's a basic switch. Set a variable called I, you print write I as switch okay i see what it's doing so you define the variable depending on the switch case then you're gonna output the string of that number so we do this we'll define the variable called i to two and then we'll fnt print oh you don't have to print ln let's try print write i and then we'll put it in a switch of i, which is the variable that we define. And we need to open up those curly braces. Case one. Oh, case one. <laughs> it's if the case is equal to one, we're gonna fmt print ln one. Then we'll case two, fmt print ln of two. Case three, fmt print ln of three. Run. Write two as two. All right, pretty straightforward. You can use commas to separate multiple expressions in the same case statement. And not hot out. We can use commas to separate multiple expressions in the same case statement. We we'll use the optional default case in this example. So. Interesting. So we could do. Uh, I'm gonna change this up a little bit. I'm gonna just say day equals time dot now dot weekday, and I'm going to print out the day. Let's see if that works. Time. All right. Probably need that as well. Run. All right. Tuesday. Huh. That's kind of weird. <laughs> it's definitely not Tuesday. It's Saturday. I wonder what it's doing. Hmm. This is 
very interesting. Let's just copy this code and see what happens. Alright, that's a little ugly, so I'll just rewrite it. Switch. Time dot now dot weekday. Case time dot Saturday. Time dot Sunday. I see it's so for the sake of this example, this is saying that you could do multiple conditionals inside of one case and just if it makes sense, right? So like Saturday, Sunday are weekends. So let's do that. It's the weekend. And then we'll add a default here. And everything else, it's a weekday, right? Run. It's definitely not a weekday. So I think there's something wrong with this uh, time.now function. But for the sake of the example, I, I get it. Like you could do multiple conditionals and then work your way from there. Interesting. Let's, let's see if this works. T equals time.now. FMT print ln of t run. Hmm. All right, dot hour twenty three. I wonder what time zone this is in. It's pretty interesting. Definitely not 23, right? <laughs> All right, whatever. Let's move on to the next one. Um, a type switch compares types instead of values. Switch, a type switch compares types instead of... Okay, so it, it compares value uh, types. You can use this to discover type of interface. In this example, the variable T will have a type corresponding to its clause. Okay. What am I... And function of i of interface. So, ah, I see. In interesting. So, what am I? So, you're setting a variable of what am I? So, what am I is a function which takes in a variable of i, and the type that it can take is an interface. So. I'm not really too clear on what interface is, but it looks like it could take different types of types, whether it's a Boolean, string, or number. And with that, you can start messing around and determine what type it is. So I think what this is relatively doing is you define a variable called 1MI, and you set it equal to a function. And like, JavaScript, you could take in a couple of arguments. So in this case, it's going to be a interface. And here you could say switch, what am I? I'm, not, I'm doing it this way because I think I get what this is doing. Because remember before, I think in that if, if lesson, you can scope things inside of the conditional itself but I think this is a little bit more clear on what's happening I think the one thing that you do lose and this is kind of by, on a use case by case situation is that now one am I is not really public it's not going to be scope to the switch statement only it's exposed to outside of here so I'm sure that depending on what you want to do um, you could have it scoped in or scoped out so let's do switch T Okay, equals what am I? Oh no, it's equal to. Oh, interesting. All right, so switch equals T. Switch of T equals I dot type. And I guess that's how the syntax works. Ah, oh, no, 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 I did this wrong. All right, let's remove this. And now we say switch T equals i of the type and here we could say case if you're a boolean type then we're gonna fmt print ln i'm a boolean we say case int 
f of t print ln i'm an int here we just give it a default fmt print f don't no type whatever is given all right let's do this so we could write what uh we'll match the syntax so what am i do here of true. Let's just see if that works. All right, expecting comma something something here. Interesting. Why does that not allowed? Ah, uh, no. So yeah, I guess I was misunderstanding how this works one of my is a function that has a switch statement inside of it so i actually need to open up this curly brace here i thought i was just defining the variable function but that doesn't make any sense at all and then we'll move this here okay that doesn't work so i'm just gonna no how does the syntax work all right so I'm gonna do this boom and then I guess we'll push it up a little bit. Cool. Now that should work, I think. Where's this closing brace? That makes sense. All right, let's try this now. <laughs> oh, okay. Why isn't this working? 27. What am I? It's equal to function of I of it. Unexpected curly brace. Hmm. Sent after top level declaration 22, 27, 28, 29. What am I doing wrong here? What am I is equal to the function of the interface. And then we do a switch here of the T, then case boolean, case int, and the default. Hmm. 2730. Very curious if I just take this and just put it here. Wow. I spelled interface wrong. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. Interface. Run. I'm a bull. Cool. And then what am I? Of the number. I'm an int. And then last but not least, let's just do a string. Hey. Run. Don't know type string. Cool. All right, it looks like it all worked out pretty nicely. So in this lesson, I guess it's not really a lesson, it's just me learning. Um, we went to the go by example and we went up to the switch, if else, for constants, variables, values, and hello world. Looks like we have a lot more to go. And I think it's probably gonna get a lot harder in this section. So for now, let's just enjoy these small wins. Um, like I said, if you want to know more about this live streaming, this is my first time doing it. So uh, I don't really know exactly where to announce this and whatnot. But uh, one thing I did want to show is that I did start an Instagram channel. It's Instagram.com slash the tech rally. Uh, I'm just going to post things about that. I things about what I do in terms of just like posting pictures, updating content, and just really getting um, some information out there in terms of what my coding adventures are like. And of course, if you if you already have been following me, you know that I have a Twitter account, so more followers, more appreciation. <laughs> and yeah, that's it. Um, talk to you some other time. Let me know again in the comments below where would be the best avenue for me to just relay this kind of live information. Until then, see you later. Bye.